On this episode of Two Women Sailing, we leave Cape Cod behind us and run full speed ahead into engine problems. We're doing some tests today, so that's what you're witnessing. I'm Vanessa. I'm Sarah. And, and we're, we're Two Women Sailing. sailing. Morning. I'm in mourning today because we're leaving P-Town and it was really fun and we were hoping to stay longer but the storm Ida is making us move because the winds are gonna get crazy and we're on a mooring ball and we need to be in a marina and a little safer so we're traveling to Sandwich today which is nothing like P-Town. There's not much wind happening, so we're motor sailing. We do have the sails up because it's given us at least another knot, and we're trying to make it to Sandwich before the rain starts. It's not an exciting ride this morning. The sky is dark, and the rain is already showing itself. It's getting too foggy to make things out. Yeah, I do, I do like having the landmark. Even though, I mean, you know, we've got our instruments and everything, but it's nice to be able to lock in on something in, yeah. in, real, in real life. Goodbye, Cape Cod Bay. It's exciting to be turning around and going home, and, but it's a little sad to say goodbye. And we won't be back here in this, in this context. Don't worry, we still have four months on the water. <laughs> and we're going to Sandwich. And this town is making me hungry. So we head toward our landmark. That just happens to be the canal generating plant that you see up ahead here. It's right next to the town of Sandwich, so we're close to our destination. The Sandwich Marina is one of the nicer marinas we visited. Vanessa's had tons of practice at this point. So let's see how this docking experience goes. She whips good stories around and into place perfectly. And just in time too, Ida is coming. To our relief, most of her wind and rain comes overnight. We're happy to once again have found safe harbor in a marina. Now that's a dramatic switch in the weather. Back down Cape Cod Canal we go. Back under the Sagamore, Bourne, and Railroad bridges. If you missed our trip north through this canal, check out our Cuddy Hunk to Plymouth video. Now I'll be quiet and let you enjoy the rest of this boat ride. What lies at the end of the Cape Cod Canal is a little town called Pocasset. After the Boston Globe wrote that article about us during Hurricane Henri, a fellow sailor named Debbie reached out to us. She said we should make a stop here, not only because it's beautiful and off the beaten path, but she promised us dinner and Yanmar engine parts too. Who can resist an offer like that? We were instantly floored by this little slice of New England paradise. We even got to put Good Story's draft of five and a half feet to the test. It's been a while since we've been in some really shallow water. No, this is like Florida. This is like Florida. We're at one. Our depth is now 13 feet. And 
I like our position. We dropped anchor in a great little nook. Once the anchor is down for several minutes, we throw the engine into reverse and back good stories down to dig in, a crucial part of the anchoring process. Thank you, Beverly. All set? Yeah. Thank you, Beverly. We also have to thank our engine every time. Whip, we're home. Anchorage is so beautiful. I can't even tell you right now how lucky we are to be here. It is just awesome. So Beverly Air Engine has been giving us a little bit of trouble uh, for quite a while now. What? A couple months? Longer and than I'd like to admit. Yeah, uh, we just can't get up to the RPMs uh, we were used to getting into. We've been having to stay 1800, 1700, which is slow if you're trying to motor in a sailboat. So Vanessa has worked tirelessly to try to figure out what the issue is. We're in Red Brook Harbor, Massachusetts. This has been plaguing us since before New Jersey. <laughs> and so we're doing some tests today. So that's what you're witnessing. Let's do 1500. We start off slow to get our engine, Beverly, warmed up. I'm gonna get us up to 2,000 in just a minute if you wanna go check our needle. Yep. Yes, it's at three o'clock in the white. Okay, good. So far, 1,500 RPMs, good. RPMs. You hear that? Yeah. We're trying to keep our ears in tune because if we hear a little bit of stuttering, that's what we're that's what we're trying to listen for. Another pressure check. Our pressure gauge is showing higher than we'd want at this point. And there's that stutter again. I'm gonna put it up at 2200. Okay. If anything happens, we drop the hook. Okay. Or like if our engine fails, we don't even have to sail anywhere. She's trying. Well, we're hanging out at 2300. 2300? Yeah. It's really good. It is. All right. All right, now you're in the red, but it's low red. Not good. Red isn't good, so Vanessa slows us down. Whoops. We're traveling at four knots. I'm gonna turn us back on. Okay. The engine stalled out when Vanessa put the throttle all the way down. Okay, I got starved of fuel. That's why it shut off. Still not good. Still hanging out in the same spot. Bottom red, hasn't moved. Vanessa has me check the injectors this time to see if there's any diesel pooling. It does appear to have a small puddle behind it. The oil on two was in front of it. Oh, it was in front of it. Yeah, that would be coming from number so one then. It could come from one. And then I noticed not within the injectors, but like next little sort of cavity over, there's some pooling. I don't know if it was already there, but it looks two. like there's a pool it's not in the areas where you told me to check, though. All right, I'm going to take her up to 2,000. I'm bringing the music down so you can hear the change in our engine for yourself. I don't, 
I don't think we need to test anymore. I think we have the information that we have. You know, we, we put her through her paces a couple of times and it's not improving. I want to just, I just want to forge ahead, but that's an emotional decision. It's a, it's a selfish emotional decision. A, re a responsible, good seamanship decision is why the hell would you make the passages you're about to make with a faulty engine? Yeah, I mean, if we're able to fix it here, then that makes the rest of our journey that much easier. And it takes the headache and stress out of every single journey we take. Let's, let's just try to figure it out here. If it delays us a few days, it's okay. Yeah, because we don't want to be stuck in lots of other places, and we do have a resource in a Yanmar shop. Yeah. I realize that we have one more filter, which I have consistently just ignored, never thought twice about it. It's an Algae X magnetic fuel filter. So it picks up like metal fragments and traces. I opened that up this morning and there was gunk in there. And there was a big blob of gunk, probably the size of my pinky nail. But guess what? The opening to the fuel line is about the size of my pinky nail. So I'm bullish today that this is going to be our solution, that we found the final obstacle. We're gonna pull up the hook, we're gonna motor, and then we're gonna go into the fuel dock, even if it's successful, because I think I wanna to talk to the mechanic anyway, but fingers crossed, that last filter that I'd been ignoring, out of sheer ignorance, because I've never had one before, fingers crossed. Vanessa's lifting up the hook, Today we try engine test number two. All right, ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, bringing it up to 2,000. It looked good. It was creeping. It was, it was creeping towards was yellow, it? but it was it's not quite at yellow. Let's just head in. Okay. We know we're heading in anyway. I don't want to push it to the four o'clock mark. Do you want me to take the helm so that it would run aground in my fall? <laughs> and that brings us here, Kingman Yacht Center. I'll either blow it through or suck it back. All right. Hopefully we'll do one or the other. Our new friend, Debbie, has hooked us up with a mechanic named Tim. He wastes no time troubleshooting. He believes it's the fuel line. He's going to try to suck diesel out of the engine. Should just we should just see a stream of fuel, shouldn't we? Yeah. So the theory is, uh, he cut the hose in front of the algae X, and and you would assume fuel would come spilling out because it's from the tank to this. There's no check valve or cut off valve. So he cut the hose off and it drips of fuel. So the theory is, the hose is clogged. And the only reason it's been working is because the engine puts enough pressure on it to suck it through. And we can suck through enough to go 1800 RPMs, but if we demand more fuel at higher RPMs, it says I can't suck any harder than I am, so the clog is there. Tim and Vanessa go to work searching for the fuel line. This is what they discover. Look at how that line is pinched. It might be time for new hoses. So we're about to test. Brand new fuel hoses, input and output. Um, all right, so I'm gonna get us up to 15. We're at 20. Sounds good, if you wanna go look at the... Uh, look at the gauge. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Holy <laughs> <laughs> That's 
That's amazing. I bet you're the Mentera, right? Top end or? It sounds or great. Or... Sarah, that needle hasn't moved. Really? That's okay. That is life changing. You're amazing. Thank you, Tim. <laughs> Thank wow. you so much. <laughs> oh man, all right, I'm gonna go. Amazing. No, <laughs> Tim, we've been wrestling yeah, for a while. Been, we've, we, and we limped along. It's been a couple months. I don't want to. People don't want to get into anything. There was a kink in the fuel line. So of course it was high pressure and it's gone. We just tore out that fuel line and now we have fresh clean hose that's not 35 years old which was gonna have to be replaced anyway and that fuel just runs right to it and Beverly can drink all she wants I'm like stupid happy right now <laughs> like it's just not even right Pearson I love this boat they built the boat around the fuel line I'm pretty sure like they must have installed the fuel tank installed the fuel lines and then put the floor just put it all together because they're pinched they're not moving we ended up snipping them on either end and just left the, the crimp in there. Just empty fuel hose. And with that, the tale of the fuel-starved engine comes to a close and has a happy ending. We're so grateful to Kingman Yacht Center, our mechanic Tim, and our new friend Debbie, who made all of this possible. A twist of fate, a positive outcome, and another good story. We leave the Yacht Center, happy sailors. I'm gonna turn her up here and try her out, right? Yeah, yeah, we're gonna, we gotta get past this hairpin that makes me crazy. And then uh, we're gonna get in the straightaway and we're gonna put her up to 2,000. We love Picasso and are thankful for our new friends, Debbie and her wife, Michelle. That's all for now. We'll see you on the next leg of our journey. You like us, we like you. So go ahead and subscribe so we can see more of each other.